Hi everyone, so today I want to show you this 3D animated cube within After Effects that has moving typography around its edges. So let's jump straight in and I can show you how I've made it. Cool, so the first thing we're going to do is create one side of the cube. I'm going to do some moving typography on my side, um, which I will start with here. So I've pressed Command T on my Mac to bring up the type tool. I'm going to type cube. Now I want this text to stretch on the sides like this back and back and then repeat that on all the edges. So to do that I'm going to create shapes from text and delete that layer now because I don't need it anymore and I'm going to press U twice to bring up all the components that um, have elements that have changed in it. So I've got all of my paths for my, for my letters up here and I'm going to simply add a keyframe for each of the letter elements and I'm going to move to one. I'm going to start to animate these. So. So I'm going to firstly move this to the other side and I'm going to stretch out the font a little bit by highlighting the path that I want to be animated. So I'm going to do the same for B and move that here and then I'm just going to highlight the edges of this and stretch this out and do the same for U. Now as you can see here for U, as I've stretched it, it's created this weird shape. That's because these kind of should be in the middle, but I don't quite like the shape of that. So I'm gonna go back to the start and I'm gonna add an extra point on the path and zoom right in either side of this. So if I get uh, my pen tool up, zoom in again, as soon as I can see the plus next to it, I will add a plus either side of those middle ones. So with those now selected, when I go back to the one second where my other keyframes are, I can then stretch this out so it looks a bit cleaner. And move this along here. And then do the same for C. Cool, so I've done that by eye, so I'm just gonna go back and move this back slightly. Cool, so I'm gonna get my ruler up by pressing Command R. And I'm gonna put my ruler right at the very edge of the E here. And then if I go to two seconds and copy and paste the keyframes from naught seconds to two seconds for each letter, and then I can just highlight those and drag it up to this ruler. Okay, so if I was to play that back from naught, it would look something like this. So obviously that's quite a slow animation. So if I hit U just to show up all the keyframes in there, and what I can do is add some movement on the graph editor to make that a bit smoother. So I'm going to highlight all the middle keyframes, drag the handle down all the way to the bottom on the left side, and then do the same for the right side in the middle. And I'm just going to tighten this up so it goes a bit quicker. So we can highlight all the middle keyframes, highlight the end keyframes, and see what that looks like. You can see it stretches in the middle, and then bounce it back on the other side. And I want it to wait there for a bit and then bounce back onto the other side. So I need to copy these end keyframes. So Command C and then Command V a little bit further down so you've got a bit of a pause on that side. And then I want to copy the middle keyframes and then copy the start end frames. So it looks something like that. And then what you can do is copy that whole thing and come out and paste it again. And one more time. And I'm just increasing the pauses so it fills the timeline. 
Okay, so if I was to play that back, it looks something like this. And then I want to copy that for each side. So I duplicate the layer by pressing Command D, um, and then I'm just going to rotate it. So I've got press W for the rotate tool, hold down Shift and on the side. So let's see what that looks like. Oops, put that at the top actually. Okay, so I see what I've done wrong here. What I need to do is actually only animate it up to here so that I can leave a space here so that once it's on this side, it doesn't overlap each other. Cool, so once that is done, it should look like that. Um, and then we just want to go ahead and add those pauses in. Okay, so it should look something like this. Now, when we duplicate this layer, and rotate it like this and then it looks something like that. Now you need to duplicate that file um, and rotate it and put it on each of the edges. So I'll duplicate it again. Okay, so once I turn that off, let's have a look at that. And it looks something like this. And actually I'm going to add in a rotating square in the middle. So I'm going to type out cube and just repeat that several times. And I'm going to shrink this font down so it's about 20 look like. Let's try 40. Okay, so if I, I'm going to highlight all that and copy it. Make sure this is long enough. Let's see what that looks like. So if I put that in the middle and then I'm gonna create a mask over the top of this layer. If I turn on my title safe, it actually shows me where the middle is. So if I double click on the mask and align that into the middle and that's centered. Now, if I go to my text layer and I hit down the text button, um, it says path options here. So if I click path options and I click mask, then I tell the text to wrap around the mask. And I'm just short of a few cubes here. So if I type in cube a couple more times, um, and as you can see here, I've typed that out, but that hasn't appeared. And that's because the text box isn't big enough. So if I turn off the path for a sec, zoom out, and then I just need to double click the layer and make the text box larger. So when I come back down to my path options and I click mask, then it will appear there. Um, and as you can see here, there's a slight gap. So if I just turn this up slightly, so I've put 40.2 and there you go, that's a good spacing. Now to animate this, I need to create a keyframe for either the first margin or the last margin. It doesn't particularly matter, but let's just do first margin for this one. And then I'm going to finish it here and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to try and match that where it was at the very beginning there which is slightly back like that so that it loops around. So now that we've created all the moving elements within this cube um, it's actually got a transparent background which we don't want we want to want it to have a solid black background so if I right click um, on my window and press new solid and I'm going to do a black solid for this. So hit OK, that goes to the top of my composition. I move that to the bottom um, and that's my first side of the cube finished. So now I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to press Command Shift C and it's going to bring up my pre-composed box. So I'm going to pre-compose these elements as uh, cube side 01 and hit OK. So that's the first side of my cube done. So I actually want um, a second side, but the colors in reverse. So I'm going to duplicate this cube side and I'm going to bring that into my main comp. I'm going to double click it um, 
And actually, I'm gonna make this second color a sort of bright green, and I'm gonna hit new. Um, and then I'm gonna click on the big cube layers here, and I'm gonna change this color to black. Um, and then I'm gonna click the text file, and I'm gonna change this to black. Okay, so now that you have um, created your the second side of your cube, we're going to start to actually create the cube in our main comp. So first off, I'm going to turn these into 3D layers by clicking this 3D layer button here. I'm actually going to turn down the size of them by about 50%. And then I'm going to start to shape my cube. So I'm going to create the cube using the compositions as the sides. So if I hit the R button, it brings up my rotation um, and I'm going to rotate this side by 90 degrees um, and I'm going to then move it forward. Now I change my views down here to get a better look um, at what I'm doing. So if I click this side, this is the top. Um, and as you can see here, it's not quite reached the side. So I'm going to move that up to the side. And then you want to move it along, move it backwards. And so let's zoom in to get a better look. Um, if I hit P, moving it pixel by pixel just to get it bang on okay so that looks good so then the next side the back of the cube we want it to be the black one so we want it alternate um, and then so we duplicate side one bring it to the bottom uh, rotate it by 180 degrees on the Y so it's sort of backwards and then we want to move it to the back on the Z plane. Zoom in here again. Um, and if I hit P, it shows me my uh, position properties. And about right, and then duplicate the second one. Um, and then we do the same. So we rotate that and put that on the other side. Um, and then we want to do the top and bottom. And for the top and bottom, we want to change the, the view from top, which it says it up here, to uh, the left or the right. Okay, so if we go back to one view for now, and I'm gonna add a null object to use to animate this box. So if I put the null in the middle, turn that onto as 3D, um, and then if I go back to my two views, I highlight this and I wanna put this in the middle of this cube. Okay, lovely. Now if I go back to here and I highlight all of the cube sides and link them to the null. So the null's the parent. And now every time I move this null, it will move the whole cube as one. So if I just, and you can see there that the whole thing moves together. So now that we've created the cube, um, and we've got it all parented to this null, we can then now start to animate it. And once it's animated, you can then start to duplicate it um, and move it around however you please. So let's say you want it to spin in all directions. So you put a keyframe for each one and let's say X once, Y twice, 
said once. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now that that's uh, rendered, uh, you can see here that the cube is animating, uh, spinning around, and you've got the animation from within the composition itself. And now you've got your cube set up. If you wanted to change what happened on each side, all you have to do is go into the individual compositions that you've set up um, and just change whatever's in there. And you could have set up um, a different side completely to each one. Um, so every single side has something different on it. Uh, that's completely up to you. So now this is set up as a moving cube. I'm going to pre-comp this by pressing Command Shift C and putting put rotating cube. Now that I've got this as a comp, I can duplicate this and I can shrink it down. And I might want to have mini rotating cubes that spin around this cube. So I'm going to set that up. Okay, so now I have the setup and I've got my main cube in the middle, which I'm gonna change to lavender so that it stands out. Actually, I can change to red so that I can see that that's my main cube and the other ones are spinning around it. So again, if I create a um, null object and I put that, have that in the middle, and I highlight these and make uh, the null the parent. And all I need to do again is rotate this, say by two. Now we've not only got um, that spinning cube in the middle, we've also got spinning cubes on the outside. Cool, and that's how you create a 3D spinning cube within After Effects with moving animation on the sides. Um, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please hit the subscribe button. Cool, till next time. Thank you, bye.